Patrick Wayne Kearney, born on the 24th of September 1939 in East Los Angeles, was described as a small sickly child. He was the oldest of three sons, with his father George, who worked for the LAPD, and his mother Eunice, who was a homemaker. He seemed to have a pretty stable home life, nothing out of the ordinary for the times he grew up in. In 1944, they moved to Montebello. However, by now, he had reached school age, and he was becoming a target for bullies, who liked to call him homophobic names, because he was effeminate. And then after the third son, they moved to Reseda, California, who was still a target for bullies in his new school. This led to Patrick becoming withdrawn, and the hatred for his bullies festered inside of him, where he started to fantasise about killing them by skinning them alive. Patrick's father had taught Patrick how to kill pigs by shooting them behind the ear. Unfortunately, this clearly excited Patrick too much as he started doing it with other animals by himself whenever he had the chance, watching their pain and suffering, also becoming fascinated with the blood and entrails. This is when it also led to zoophilia. When Patrick was in his mid-teens, his father quit his role in the LAPD and become a travel agent. This required them to move to Wilcox, Arizona, where Patrick learnt languages becoming fluent in Spanish, Japanese and Chinese. But before long, they relocated again to Redonda Beach, and this is where Kearney graduated. The Kearneys then moved to Houston, Texas, for a short period of time, and then back to California, where Patrick enrolled in El Camino Community College. But it wasn't long before he dropped out and joined the United States Air Force, where he found himself back in Texas, where he was stationed. This is when he met David Hill, who would be his on and off lover for the next 15 years. David Hill was in the army when both he and Patrick met, and they had to keep their relationship secret, as otherwise they found out would both be dishonourably discharged and possible jail time as being gay was illegal then. In 1959, David Hill, who was originally from Lubbock, Texas, returned back home because he was diagnosed with a mental illness and therefore left the army. This is when he married Mary Carlson, which only lasted a few months. Trick, meanwhile, was also honourably discharged I'm not sure why he was honorably discharged, but he moved back to California as an electrical engineer. In 1962, David Hill moved into Patrick's one-story stucco Long Beach home, with Hill being in odd part-time jobs and with a lack of finances. This became a turbulent time for both men. When David Hill left and then went back to, to try again with his marriage in Lubbock, it was also in the spring of 1962 that Patrick took his motorcycle and went for a ride. Whilst travelling, this is when he met a 19-year-old man and his 16-year-old cousin. And from research, the 19-year-old could have been either from Louisiana or Oklahoma. However, he persuaded the 19-year-old into taking a ride with him, leaving the cousin behind waiting and taking the 19-year-old to an isolated area which is near Indio, California, off the State Highway 86. I'm unsure what had taken place beforehand, maybe the 19-year-old rejected him, but Patrick ended up shooting the 19-year-old behind his left ear. He then sexually assaulted the 19-year-old's corpse. It was then he realised that clearly he left a witness behind who would be waiting for his return. Kearney went back on his motorcycle to find the cousin in the same spot and persuade him to come for a ride. He took the 16 year old to where his cousin was and did the exact same thing, shooting the 16 year old dead and abusing the corpse. In one day, Kearney had killed two young people. It wasn't long before Patrick needed to kill again. This time, the victim was called Mike, a drifter. Luring Mike again, 
to an area outside of Indio and doing the same as he had previously done to the first two victims. David Hill returned to Patrick after his marriage ended in 1966. He began living with Patrick again at Long Beach. As I said before, Patrick was an electrical engineer, but by this time he had been promoted where he worked at the Hughes Aircraft and with a larger salary rented a duplex in Culver City. On a trip to Tijuana, Mexico in 1967, Patrick met a man named George. Some reports were saying George was killed in Tijuana where he was shot, raped and cut up. Other reports say that George was taken back to the Culver house and that's where he was shot, raped and dismembered and buried. Either way, I couldn't seem to find out any more about George. At the end of 1967, Patrick and David moved to Redonda Beach. And as I said before, the couple argued and fought a lot. And this, when this happened, Patrick would simply take off in his car, often going to Tijuana, Mexico, where he would claim more victims, using his skills in Spanish to lure young men. Mexican police had noticed a spate of young men found dead, having been shot in the head, raped and dismembered, and found in trash bags on the side of the road. I'm not sure how many men were killed at this point, but in 1971, Patrick would kill a child. The victim was 13-year-old John Demichik. Patrick came across the boy standing on the corner of Inglewood. Patrick offered him a ride home. When the boy accepted a lift, Patrick shot him. But although John didn't die straight away, Patrick drove him to a secluded area, several miles away outside of Calexico. John was dragged to a gully and raped as the poor child bled to death. It would be 20 months before John, John's remains were found, only being identified by clothing that John had worn that day by his mother. In MacArthur Park, downtown LA, September the 22nd, 1974, James Barwick, a 17 year old, was lured by Patrick to another secluded area he shot Barwick in the head. In the same year of August 1974, Patrick struck again. This time his victim was a five-year-old little boy. Ronald Dean Smith Jr. who had been playing in a park along with another boy in Lennox in Inglewood. Ronald had been left in the care of Shirley O'Connor, as whilst his mum was out of town. When Ronald didn't come home for dinner, Shirley contacted the boy that he had been playing with, only to find out that the boy had returned home hours ago after leaving Ronald in the park, upset because they had a fight. Shirley called the police and Ronald's mother came home immediately. Unfortunately, on the 13th of October 1974, a trash bag had been found by two boys collecting cans on the Ortega Highway near Elk Arezzo village in Riverside County. When they looked inside, they found the remains of a child. Police were called and the body was identified as Ronald. Autopsy results show that he had been tortured for two days before being strangled. Just a matter of just five months later, another victim with the name of Albert Rivera. I didn't know the age or where he was from, but he also became a victim as he was discovered in trash bags, having been dismembered and left on the side of the road near San Juan Capistrano. His dismembered body had been washed and drained of blood, placed in double-lined bags, with each bag sealed with a nylon fibre tape. The next victim was Larry Jean Waters, a hitchhiker, on November the 10th, 1975, at Redondo Beach. Patrick took him back to his house. This time, when he dismembered Larry, he separated all the body parts and putting the parts in separate bags, disposing of them in different locations. On the 1st of March, 1976, 17-year-old Kenneth E. Buchanan fell foul to Patrick's cruel, twisted intentions. 
when Patrick found him on the side of the road. He shot Buchanan in the head and took him home. There he raped Buchanan and when he woke up, Patrick then shot him three more times. Next, there was 13-year-old Oliver Peter Molitor and he was killed on the 21st of March. After tricking him into playing doctor, he was then killed and then buried in various areas of Palos Verdes landfill in separate bags. On the 18th of April, Armand Desares was 15 years old and he was Patrick's next victim. He got him into his truck where he shot him, then got him back into his house where he abused the corpse and then doing his usual of dismembering and getting rid of the body. Just a couple of months later, Patrick was to meet 13-year-old Michael Craig McGee, who was known in his family to be rebellious, and he would often take off doing his own thing. McGee was hitchhiking from Redondo Beach to Torrance. Apparently, Patrick asked him if he wanted to go camping near Lake Elsinore in Riverside County, and although McGee declined the offer, he did say he would go the week after. So on June 11, 1976, Patrick went to McGee's house to pick him up. When the boy's sister answered the door, he said he was grounded. However, when McGee heard it was Patrick Kearney, he jumped out of the window and got into Patrick's truck. McGee's family called the police, but as McGee had run away before, it wasn't followed up. When Patrick was asked about this after, he had been convicted. He said something about McGee was, was going to rob him, so he killed him. All Patrick said was, I disposed of the body, you aren't going to find him. Tony Stewart met Patrick in a convenience store after his car had broken down. He recognised Patrick as he used to mow the lawn of the house Patrick rented. Tony trying to buy beer and Patrick offered after Tony only graduated from school a year earlier and said if he was to buy it for him, he was to drink it at Kearney's house. When they arrived, they talked for a bit before Kearney lied about being a doctor and asked to listen to his heartbeat with a stethoscope. Tony agreed, but started to feel uncomfortable and said he would need to go home, otherwise his parents would lock him outside. With that, David Hill walked in the door. This made Kearney nervous. On the way home, Tony said he would have to stop by again and Patrick gave Tony such a strange look Tony wanted to get out of their car quickly, so he said to stop by this house. He jumped out of the car and saw Patrick go off down and turn around. Tony quickly took off and hid behind a fence. On June the 20th, John Wood, known as Woody, aged 23, was found dead having been shot in the head that morning in San Diego. Interestingly, Woody had been with Tony Stewart and the other friends the night before. They had been drinking and at the end of the night he asked to be dropped off at a bar as he was going to have a few more drinks, bearing in mind the others probably weren't old enough. 17 year old Larry Epsi would be the next victim for Patrick. Although unsure of the date, but the teenager was found in separate trash bags on August the 23rd 1976. Five days later, Wilfred Lawrence Faherty was discovered with a gunshot to the head. On 6th of October 1976 in Orange County, 21-year-old Mark Andrew Orak was found in the same way as the other victims. On October 10th, Randall Randy Lawrence Moore, aged 16, was found dead. He had been killed sometime in the summer in San Diego. Again, the 15th of September, Timothy Bingham was hitchhiking in California State Route 76 when he was spotted by Patrick. He pulled up and offered him a ride. Timothy accepted. Whilst Timothy fell asleep, Patrick shot him in the head. Timothy's body would be discovered in a ravine on the 24th of November. In the fall of 1976, Robert Billy Benfield, 17-year-old student at Torrance Aviation High School, whose bike broke in Rondondo Beach, had been reported missing. As usual, police thought it was another runaway 
except it wasn't, as he was another victim of Patrick's, and he had been shot and dismembered, although his body was never found. The other boy killed in the fall of 1976 was a David Allen, aged 27, but Patrick confessed to killing David after picking him up in Fallbrook, North San Diego, after killing him and dumping his body along the side of the road. In Lennox on 23rd of January 1977, a state employee was beneath the San Diego Freeway's Lennox Tunnel when he fell over a big trash bag. It turned out to be 28-year-old Nicholas Hernandez Jimenez. Nicky, as he was known as, was from the Los Angeles area. John LeMay was 17 years old when he went missing. But on Sunday, March the 13th, 1977, at 5.30 p.m., his neighbour reported that he had said he was going to meet a guy called Dave at Redondo Beach, and that Dave was someone he had met in the gym in downtown L.A. This was at 5.30 p.m., and this was the last time any of his friends or family would see John again. His mother, who called the police the next day, was obviously frantic with worry, as he wouldn't have just left for a long period of time without contact, and certainly not in the habit of taking off for days at a time. But still, as we heard before, unfortunately the police considered John a runaway. On March 18th, John's remains were found in South Corona. He had been dismembered, cleaned and washed, and put into five separate trash bags. Nylon filament tape had been used to seal the bags. An oil drum had been filled with three of the bags and the other two were left next to it. Although John's head was missing, he was identified from a birthmark. So what actually happened when John LeMay went missing? Well, it seems that Hill wasn't at home when John turned up. So Patrick chatted with John before getting his 22 caliber out and shooting him in the head. Having time to clean and dismember John before Hill came back, then disposing of his body. Until now, Patrick had got away with so many murders, but after a newspaper clipping had caught the attention of Patrick's neighbor after reading the description of the killer, and with the interview, with John LeMay's friends, and the fact that John was meant to be meeting a David Hill and a Pat of Redondo Beach. Police learned about Dave and Pat who lived in Redondo Beach and quickly worked out the address that both men lived at. And then when the detectives arrived at the home, both Patrick and Hill were polite. But it was Patrick who started to feel nervous when detectives took a sample of the carpet after finding blue fibres on John's body. After comparing the samples, they were a match. Other samples like pubic hair and were also taken. Whilst both Patrick and Hill were under investigation, Patrick still managed to kill again. And this time it was a seven year old boy on April the 6th, 1977. Merle Hondo Chance of Venice was riding his bike near to where Patrick worked. And when the boy's bike broke, Patrick asked if he needed a lift. As soon as the boy got into the car, Patrick smothered him. He then took the body back to his house where he sexually abused his corpse. The next day, he dumped the boy's body in a national forest near Angeles Crest. The boy's remains were found on May 26th. This was to be the last victim before Patrick's arrest. Pubic hair found on John matched Patrick's. Now detectives had a warrant to search the duplex. Patrick resigned from his job. Patrick and Hill left the area and no one knows why Hill went with him or how much he knew. But meanwhile, the search of the house came up with a hacksaw. Still had remnants of John LeMay on the saw. Luminol was used and it showed traces of blood in the bathroom and in other areas of the house. A nationwide bulletin was put out as Patrick and David were now wanted men and fugitives for the murder of John LeMay. Patrick and David went, went to David's mum's house.
where they managed to persuade them to go back and prove their innocence. Strangely enough, both Patrick and David agreed to. On the 1st of July, Patrick and David turned up at Riverside, California Sheriff's Information Center and identified themselves where they were taken into custody. Kearney agreed to confess to all his crimes if the death penalty was taken off the table. Strangely enough, Patrick didn't seem to know that the Supreme Court of California found the death penalty unconstitutional. So a change of law meant death row inmates had their death sentences commuted to life in prison. Though whether he knew about the change in the law or not, we're not sure. Patrick was really eager to confess though. And the one thing he was always afraid of was David Hill finding out. Patrick cooperated with the police, signing a confession to the killing of 28 men and young boys. 12 had already been confirmed by police. David Hill was acquitted on July the 15th. District Attorney Byron Morton said that the evidence against David Hill was too weak. So to keep David away from the reporters, he was secretly escorted out of the courthouse and taken home by his nephew. Now on the 21st of December, Patrick pleaded guilty to all three counts of the first degree murder of Riverside County murders of Albert Rivera, Arturo Marquez and John LeMay. He was given three life sentences to run concurrently, with the possibility of parole in seven years. However, Patrick had confessed to 28 killings, but only convicted for three. But with the possibility of parole, authorities were, were determined to gather more evidence to convict him of all murders. Patrick was happy to oblige, so he wrote many letters from prison to investigators in which he confessed to 18 more victims. Patrick gave more details to his crimes that in February 1978, he was then charged with 17 more counts of murder. In the end, he was served 18 more life sentences to be served concurrently. Unfortunately, at that time, there wasn't an option of life sentences without parole. It does mean the victim's families have to relive the nightmare and fight to keep Kearney inside jail. So Kearney confessed to the Californian murders, but didn't confess to any in Mexico. He still is in prison today, and he'd be 82 years old, serving at Mule Creek State Prison. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content.